Um, as you may know, uh, but I will ex show you it again. From if you access to kb.supremainc.com, you can access to our knowledge base. And here, there's the page for the BioStar 2 device SDK. And in here, there's all the uh, the manual inside. You can get a short, um, quick information about the BioStar 2 SDK. Now the uh, SDK, the package looks like this. Uh, the document, it's actually um, on the wiki here. We don't uh, provide any offline documents. Um, we have um, header files um, for C++. And in the library, we have the DLLs for Linux and Windows, both for 64-bits um, and 32-bits. Um, the example code is just C++, but we haven't um, started the C++. We have a example code in C Sharp. If you have received the latest um, SDK, the version 2.2.1, you have will be have seen a lot of examples inside here. Um, as you can see, uh, currently the BioStar 2 device SDK only um, supports uh, C++ and C Sharp. And um, if you want to use Java or Delphi or any other languages, you will have to develop your own glue code to do the marshalling. Um, this is actually our role to provide, but um, because due to all these schedules, um, the support of the other language is getting quite late, but maybe in the future, um, a few more languages could be added. But currently, for now, it's C Sharp and C++. Um, this is the basic workflow. You can refer to the page. Um, for the short um, ex explanation, if you ha have been using our Biostar 1 SDK, you might be quite familiar. Um, we had several functions for one feature. So let's say if we are sending a user, if we are enrolling a user, there was a separate different structures for the user. There were different functions per device on enrolling the user. If you can see here for the bio station, D station, X station. So even just to, if you want to just enroll one user, you had to have a lot of codes for each device. And you had to use the if and else if and run the codes depending on the device type. Now in BioStar 2 SDK, all these structures all the functions are unified so you just have to use one type of the function there's only one function for enrollment and it doesn't get different per device even if a new device gets add, uh, added for example the BioStation L2 was released quite recently but still there's no problem using that device with our SDK without changing any kind of code you just have to add that device type when you're adding um, it's more convenient because um, in BioStar 1 SDK you had to control all the handles for the connection with the device. Uh, but now the BioStar 2 SDK, it, 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 you just have to allocate the context and inside the context all, it will do all the um, hard work for you on the network connection. So you just have to use the device ID, not the handle. Um, it's also thread safe. Uh, it's flexible because, as I said, there's only one structure, one function for one feature. Um, so then if, even if a new device is added, there's not much that, that, that much that you have to change inside the, um, the code. Um, now, if I will, um, there's the basic start, how to start in C Sharp. Um, I will go through this. Um, might be a very easy part for you if you are a um, developer but um, just to show you the idea I'll create a project BioStar 2 SDK test now what you have to do is um, first I'll show you how the SDK package looks like now, this is the current um, SDK the 2.2.1 released on June the 2nd um, if you have an older version, uh, please ask your um, distributor or uh, sales representative in Suprema to send you the latest. Um, 
there wasn't any changes it, between the um, release when there are only date changes, but um, e example codes were um, modified. Um, small, minor changes if there was any kind of a bug. So inside you can see uh, there's no document. It's in wiki. There's the example code for the um, C sharp, which I will show you later. Um, you have the header files here, um, the library here. So f for now, I will copy the library file and place it into my project folder here. Um, now after that, you will have to add this string to the build events. So if you right click your solution, the project, it will, you can go to the properties and from here you will have build events. Just copy and paste it and save it. Uh, we'll close. Um, after that, I will um, change the platform to a 64-bit uh, platform since my PC um, that I'm working with is a 64-bit has a 64-bit operation uh, operation operating system. Um, after that, if you go inside the examples. you'll see plenty of files inside this uh, the common folder. Now the SF API, the SF enum, SF struct are the three core um, files that you will need to develop using our SDK. It has the APIs in here, enums inside here, and the structures inside here. The unit test and util, util file is um, the, our SDK developer kind of made some functions, uh, built some utilities that you can use. Um, but for today, I'm just I'm just going to use these three files. Um, I'm going to copy them into my project folder, and I'm going to add them. As you may know, um, you can just add it by using the selecting here from the existing item, or you can just easily drag and drop, and they'll be added. Now, from here, you just have to use. This Prima. This is what you have to use for the SDK. Um, some demos that I'm going to show you needs the interop services. Now, um, this is the code that I've worked. Uh, it's a very simple code. So for example, I'll just copy and paste. So you can see this is a function called BS2 version. Let's go to the manual and look into this function so if you see the it just gets the version of the SDK there's no re, uh, it returns the SDK version information um, once using the SDK first you have to allocate the SDK context and next you will have to initialize um, this is the only function that will give you any um, return values before you do any kind of that. It will show you the version of the SDK. Now, if I run this code, uh, we oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I've, I've. You have to copy this code. Sorry. Um, inside it, it's divided in Linux and Windows. It's, it has to be like this. Inside library, there's 64 and 86. Now, if I run, you'll see the um, SDK version printed out here, 2.2.1. Now, as I said before, 
if you want to use, if you're trying to develop anything from our SDK first you have to allocate the context um, you can see this function here it creates a context that controls and manages the device the device management context manages uh, and provides the network connection status of the connected device and is responsible for calling the API provided by the SDK. So this is the first uh, function that you have to call. So if you see here, uh, this is the code for allocating the context. Um, just returning if it has failed, if it still remains as zero. Now um, let's add a message. Uh, um, BS2 allocate context success. So if I run this code, you'll see that it succeeded on allocating the context. Now once you allocate the context, the next step is to initialize the SDK as this. Um, th those who have are familiar with the Biostar 1 SDK, we, you normally use just an int teaser for the result and BS SDK um, BS in it like this, it was like this uh, now the result is using just the as a B, you can you just have to um, define it as a BS2 error code and use this uh, API dot and initialize and you can use the context from here up above that has been um, allocated and then um, let's see let's add a BS2 initialize success. Now if I run this code you'll see that the allocating context and initializing has been um, done successfully. Uh, now once you allocate the context, SDK context, and then you initialize the context. Now you can do whatever you want but normally the first step will be adding the device and connecting the device. Um, there are two types a ways to do that. If you go to our communication API, you can see um, search devices through the subnet, and you can connect the device through the device ID. So normally, it is used by search devices and get the information of those those devices and use the device ID to connect the devices, or you can just add the um, device by using the uh, IP of the device. Um, in this. sample I have created a uh, code connecting the device directly using the IP um, you have to have the um, IP address and the port and once you connect the device um, using the IP you get the device ID so you'll have to find the device ID um, this is actually Let's just leave it. Um, now you can. Uh, the port is the default port. Um, it's five one two one one. Um, now all the BioStar two devices uses the same port. Um, in BioStar one, um, the station devices on um, BioStation, BioStation T two, X station, Face station, they used the uh, the port one four seven zero. Um, BioEntry Plus, BioEntry W, BioLite Net, XPass, XPass Slim, XPass S2, they use the port 1471. Now it's only, um, and if you're using server mode, it was 1480. Now there, we only have two ports, if you can see here. Um, let's peek the definition. Um, the device port is 51211. The TCP server port is a uh, default by 51212. Um, so this, the port is set as um, 51211. IP address, um, I'll check my device. Uh, it's 2.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
233 but this device is connect has been connected to um, my biostar 2 server so I'll have to delete the device first just for sure now um, if I get six if the device is connected I'll get the device ID that says it gets it got connected you can see here of um, the device five four six eight three two five eight six device has been connected uh, now once it's connected uh, you can see we can do a lot of things actually um, and actually inside our inside our act um, example code there are a lot of examples that you can use uh, I will I just I will just like to show you the device info using this code. Now uh, I defined a structure BS2 simple device info as device info, and using the BS2 get device info. If we go to the manual in the device API, get device info here. Um, you can see this is the type of uh, the declaration, the definition of the uh, function. It gets the device ID, type, network, network information, and configuration. And if you see this structure here, you can see it has it can give it gives you the ID, the device type, the connection mode, IP address, port, and many other um, informations that you might need to use in this code. I'm just gonna get the device type and I will show you the maximum number of the user. Um, for via station two, it's five hundred thousand, so it will appear as five hundred thousand. Let's see. So you can see, it has been connected. The device type is via station two, which is the device that I'm using right now. It, the maximum number of user for this device is five hundred thousand. So um, this is just a simple example of how to use this uh, function. Um, I have already demonstrated this um, yesterday, um, and also we had a um, a question from a customer that um, the time of the device when they you there's a function where you can get the time of the device. You can see here get device time, but they said that the time isn't. Uh, correct so I had to have a look and as you may know in the bio station 2 or the other devices you can set a time zone for that device so the time itself inside is always runs as UTC 0 the GMT time that the GMT and um, and it adds that offset of the time zone and it will show display the time the current time that you have set on the display but um, I will show you the difference from here. Let's go to this code. First, I will show you um, the time zone that is set. Um, it has to use the get system config, the BS2 get system config function here. Um, so I, I made a structure. And let's go to BS2 get system config it's here um, very simple you just have to use the parameters or context the device ID and the configuration that you're going to um, return so here here there's a time zone so if I run this code it will show you the time zone of the device is 32,400 now 32,400 for time zone, this is in seconds. If you see here in the manual, it says represents standard time zone in seconds. So 32,400 divided by 3,600, which is one hour in seconds, you'll get nine. Um, in Korea right now, we use the UTC plus, UTC plus nine time zone. So this is the correct time zone that I've set. Um, now after that, let's try to get the time of the device. 
Now first I will show you what happens if I just use these codes. So I have the uh, I have to find a get time variable. Um, the reason why it's in integer um, 32 uh, bits it's um, the time that we use inside device it's Unix timestamp which is um, the second that has passed from the year 1970 the fir January 1st so it will give, give you the results in seconds uh, let's go one by I'm sorry one by one here so I'm running, running it in, in a debugging mode so let's go um, so once I go the result is VSS to get success so I was successfully uh, I successfully called the um, function now if you see the get time it's in numbers like this and then this is the seconds that has passed from the this 1970 January 1st so I'll just have to change that time to the cur um, the format that we normally see and if you can see it says it's the 23rd of June um, 10 p.m. Uh, 25 minutes uh, 5 minutes before um, 10 and a half but if you see here down here it's a.m. Um, 24th of June 7 a.m. so if you can calculate if you calculate um, there's a nine hour difference here um, which is not correct but in my bio station 2 I'm getting the correct time the reason is that when you calculate the time you just can't use the time that you got from the uh, VS2 get device time if you live in this time zone yes you can just use this but um, you have to add that offset from the time zone which was um, 32,400 that in seconds and to the current time then you'll get the exact time so if I run this code you see um, without the time zone it will show the UTC 0 time um, the code that I added the time zone will show the exact um, time of now so it seems very correct um, so maybe if you have to use the time of the device then you can um, refer to this sample um, as I shown you before there are two types of adding the device my my in my the, the code that I just used was um, connecting a device just using the IP directly now if I run this sample this is the, uh, the example code that is included inside our SDK package the SDK developer has developed these codes now you can see there are two options connect to device via IP and search and connect devices the method I use was number two now let's try the number one as you can see it's trying to broadcast sends the UDP packets brought uh, on broadcast to these um, same network and after these so these lines were um, returned by the callback function after that it will print out the device info using this so you get the ID of the device this is the index the type of the device the connection mode the IP and port and you can just u select the um, index so this was my device the t um, one that ends with three three two five eight six which the index is six and I'll get connected using from this device so um, you can refer to our example code with, which has most of the functions that are listed um, if you can see here uh, well this is a this is a example this is an example code of the server matching which is the server matching is a method that um, when a person scans their finger to our device the device doesn't do the matching it will send that template the scan template to the server and the server will match that template with the store template and it will return the results 
Now, um, for example, you will hear a sound which is a sound when I uh, fail on authentication. Now, I will enroll a user from here. This is our server matching um, example. Uh, maybe use this. The default um, valid. I will put this user is valid until this time. I'm not going to use a private card mo auth mode. The security level will be default. Um, no, no, and no, and no. I will not register a card. I will register a finger. Now place my finger. This is not a duress finger. The access group is just default. Now, I enrolled the user, but still, if you hear it, you'll hear the sound of the uh, failed authentication. The reason is the user enrollment that I just did, it doesn't get enrolled inside the device. It, it, it enrolls a user inside the uh, DB file. Um, you will find it inside uh, Oh no, it's not in here, sorry So uh, You'll find it inside the folder. Sorry, I forgot the um, where. Oh no, actually, I think in here um, there's the server matching control release. Yes, the user DB it gets stored inside this database file. Um, so it's not inside the device. But if I start the starts using the start server matching. Now the server matching has started. Now if I place my finger, you will get hear the sound, right? And you'll see that the server responded with status BSSDK success, which means that this user has been authenticated and it will give you back the user ID here. So just showing you a quick example using our um, SDK. Um, but the server matching, um, if you just have the BioStart 2 device SDK, um, you will not be able to use it. You will have to have the uh, the image SDK or license or the BioMini SDK license to use this. So if you want to use the server matching um, method, please contact your sales representative for the license. Um, just for uh, one more, I will show you one more, let's say, I'll show you the logs. I'll connect it the same way that I did. Um, this time it seems that the index has changed to, I don't know, it's still the same, six. Now, um, I can get logs. If you don't know the last uh, log ID, you can just put zero. I just want 10 logs. Then I'll get the last 10 logs of the device inside. Now, if I use the mo monitoring log, this is the real time monitoring log. So if I try to authenticate, I failed. And it will give you the, time, the device ID, timestamp, the event uh, uh, ID, which is the index of the events, event code, identify, fail, finger user ID unknown because they don't know which user has failed. So there are a lot of examples that you can use inside our code. So basically this is the very um, simple uh, review on the Biostar 2 um, device SDK. Um,